Hello everyone, my name is Tribal Instincts and today we are reviewing I Expect You to Die. This is going to be using a new format where I am actually going through and I'm just going to go through some bullet points that I see in a cool little teleprompter in front of me. Uh, but not really going into that right now, but basically this is something new. And towards the end we're going to have some questions and answers from the live chat to go through and ask some questions. So hopefully we'll get better content and I'll be able to get more information out that is relevant to you guys because I miss stuff all the time. So first things first, the TLDR. Currently, this game is 40% off at $15, okay? So, get it. That, that's like, if, if that's the only thing that you need to know about this entire review, is for $15, absolutely. At the full price of, I think it's $24.99, the game is still amazing, but the disclaimer is that there's only five levels, so it's a bit short, so the, it's still worth it, okay? Two hours for $24.99, right? That's, that's movie-ish uh, rate, and this is so much better than a movie, okay? So... Absolutely get. Um, and I completely forgot. Uh, oops, again, we're, we're doing this live. So, ah, forgot to put my, my background. Anyway, that's that. Um, so, what this is. This is a kind of a frantic escape the room with a lot of flair. Okay, most escape the room games that I've played, it is, uh, there's, there's like a big room. You're walking around. You're moving things all, all over. Um, this one, though, for the most part, it keeps you confined to a chair. This is a seated game. But the, like, and all the puzzles are kind of within arm's reach, which I really like that because it made it like really highly interactive. Okay, so that's what this is. It's just an escape the room, but with like more more interesting little bits than what most of them do. The way that I'm going to do this review is by uh, starting with the things that I love. All right, going from kind of like middle love to a lot of love down the road. So that's where we're going to try to try to take this review. So first off, let's talk about credits. What? Credits! This, this game has the most amazing credit intro sequence from any game I've ever played. I've never actually sat through credits. I don't think ever in my entire life have I sat through credits, except at the end of every single Marvel movie. That's different though, right? This one though, I sat through the credits because it's fun. It feels like this like nice James Bond type thing. It sets the tone for the entire game. It's just clever in the music. I, I absolutely love the song that they put behind this, so worth, worth sticking through. Next, voice acting. Listen to this guy. We're calling this mission Operation Friendly Skies. I was very, very sure that it was John Cleese. It's not John Cleese. And it didn't, like, listening back, it didn't really sound like John Cleese. But the dude sounds like John Cleese. And whereas a lot of games, like, the voice acting kind of takes away from the game, in my opinion. Well, no, okay, that's not true. In a lot of cases, though, the voice acting just goes too far. Like, it's just, all right, just get to the point, whatever. In this game, though, the vote acting, it just, it always adds to it, okay? You never feel like it's just get to the point. Um, so, yeah, excellent point on that one. So, the graphics and audio on this game is, like, it's not, nothing's going to blow your socks off. However, everything just works, which is, like, pretty much my favorite praise for, for like, audio type thing. And the graphics on this one, it's all nice and cartoony. Nothing's crazy. Nothing's too bad. Uh, it just It's just simple, and I like it. Um, and then the next point, oops, on the actual gameplay itself is the puzzles. Okay, so puzzles, in my opinion, shouldn't make you feel stupid. It's kind of an interesting point. Uh, I don't, I don't want to feel stupid. However, I don't want things to be too very difficult. Now, what I mean by stupid is uh, there's a lot of escape through rooms where it's just like, oh, you didn't look in this obscure corner of the room underneath this this thing, and there was never a clue to get there. Now, there are, there's like one case where that was the case in this entire thing, where it's just, oh, I forgot to look in this one location. But for the most part, the puzzles, like it's, they're, they're discoverable. They're things that you can actually learn, um, and it's satisfying, right? It's fun. It's, it's interactive. And it's satisfying whenever you do it, even though it's not too very difficult. Um, and like, it just the, the 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 part of the puzzles is part of my favorite part of this game, which is the interaction. The interaction, like everything behaves the way the way that you want. Like for real, like I absolutely love it. Like if you want to take a um, a dish cover bowl, and if you want to put it on your head, you can just do it. Okay, you, you like, like there's little things like that. If you want to do that while smoking a guitar, or sorry. You don't smoke guitars. If you want to smoke a cigar with a dish cover on your head while eating a crumpet and like drinking tea, absolutely, you do that. There are so many VR games. For example, Budget Cuts recently is like kind of broke my heart on this one. They have all these little cool little bits and bobs and things that you can play with, but you can't play with them. Like you pick something up and it doesn't behave. It, like it's just it's just an object. It's just there. It's scenery. But in this game. 
like with very, very few um, uh, exceptions, whenever you think that you can do something because you can in the real world, like, I don't know, taking a log out of the fire pit and putting it underneath a chair, guess what? The chair's gonna catch on fire. Love it. Um, so the only real part of the interaction scene that I didn't, like I just wasn't in love with, was like sort of like this telekinetic grab that you can do. It wasn't bad, but the, that's like the only time where it's like, ah, I'm trying to do something and it won't let me do it the way I want it to. But for the most part, it just works. So not really, like it's super minor nitpick. Okay, really, absolutely minor. Um, the Honestly, the biggest like, issue that I had with this game was how short it was. Five levels, roughly two hours for most people. Me, it took me like 10 minutes because I'm a super genius. Okay, not really. I live streamed it so you guys can see how much of a liar I am. Uh, there were a few parts where I kind of got stuck. Um, but like really, the two hour time limit is sad I, because this game is so great. Overall, I absolutely loved it. I loved it so much, but it's so short and it's just kind of sad. I hope they do more content. So again, recapping, $24.99 full retail price. It's worth it, okay? $14.99, no brainer. If you haven't played this yet, go do it. Don't watch anybody live streaming it, okay? Because all the puzzles, they're fun, and it's just, it's exciting. So that's it. That's my live review, all right? Just short to the point. I don't feel like I need to embellish too much on this game uh, because it's there. But what did I miss? Okay, now I'm going to ask y'all's questions. What have I missed in this game? All right, now I'm gonna open it up to the YouTube live chat and we are going to answer y'all's questions if y'all have any. Otherwise, we're gonna call this one done. So, first question is from 2020 Gamer. What is your favorite of the five levels? I really like the Submersible. Uh, that, was, that one was probably my favorite just because I liked how frantic it was. Uh, I don't wanna go into too much spoilers, but I think that one was probably my favorite. Um, Following that, I I like the window washing one a lot. I think that, or like you know, where it starts where you're window washing. Um, <laughs> Zeus, that's right. I completely forgot. I was I actually meant to put that in at the very beginning. Uh, Zeus, how did you get the game from you? Thank you, sir. Uh, Zeus uh, kind of um, made me obligated to play this because I'd been talking about playing it for a long time. And while I was dry, live streaming the building of this application, uh, he like gave me a key to the game. So then I had to play it, uh, and I ended up absolutely loving it. So thank you, sir. <laughs> How's the game compared to some other Escape the Room VR games? Any concrete examples? Um, there was one, oh geez, names. I guess I haven't played a whole lot of Escape the Room. I've played a few puzzle games. There was one where it was not quite Escape the Room, but similar concept where you're on a train and you're moving down and you have to keep on solving these puzzles as it goes in order to get the train out, which I, I would call that a, like, kind of the Escape the Room type genre. Um, and that one was good. It was actually, it had very similar graphics to this one, but it didn't have the flair. It didn't have the, like, the feeling of, aha, whenever I accomplish something. It was just more of like, okay, cool, got it, move on, move on. This one, though, you feel pretty excited whenever you're done. So that's, that's probably the only, I can't remember the name of that game. Um, but sorry, uh, there, and there was one other where it's kind of more dark and eerie and I can't remember game names, but uh, I think I've only played like probably th two or three different escape rooms. This one's the best, I think. It's so far out of the ones I've played. If y'all know a better one, please let me know because I do like the genre quite a lot. Had the devs talked about new levels. I, I looked on the, the notification board for the game. I haven't seen anything since like October of last year, so it may look like the game's complete. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Neon says, have the developers of this game made any other games of interest? That's a good question. Could somebody look into that for me? Actually, I'll look into this after this. Uh, I, that's, I really should have looked into it because I do like what they've done so far. I really hope they make more VR content. Uh, do you think it would be possible for the players to make new levels in the future? Like that is really up to the developers, nothing in the information online. And that seems like a really hard thing to do, especially for this game. Like the voice acting, like all of the things that kind of mix together, the story, it kind of makes it. Uh, but there's, there's nothing like that. That's, that's a really hard feature to actually for developers to add to a game. Uh, what would you like to see in upcoming levels? I, honestly, that's a hard thing to say. More of the same, although in spaceships. That would be, oh, that was, a, that was an escape the room game I've played recently that was just, that was infuriating. You start in like an, an, an insane asylum uh, and then you end up going into a spaceship. I played this on a live stream. Uh, it, was, it was awful. Like it, it was just, it was bad. Anyway, <laughs> which level took me the longest? Uh, I think the level that took me the longest was the one where you're in the room with the bear. Uh, I missed one 
thing that, like, I'm not, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I missed one thing that it was not one of those things where it was like a puzzle. It was more of just like you had to stumble on it, kind of, at least from what I understand. I don't actually, I don't think there was any indication that there was a puzzle, or it was just like you had to find it. So the only case where I didn't really like how they did the puzzle. But I think that's the one that took me longest. Um, uh, Zeus would probably be able to correct me if I'm wrong on that one just because uh, he, um, he was timing me the whole time. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down now. Uh, wait, one last question from 2020 Gamer. I uh, also want to give a shout-out to him. Uh, uh, have I done Escape the Room in real life? Yes, twice. Uh, once with work, once with family. Uh, I like this a lot more than doing it in the, in the real world, to be completely honest, uh, mainly because it seems easier for developers to do fun and interesting things. That's not, in, that's not entirely true, okay? There, are, there were some really neat puzzles that I did um, in, uh, in one of the, the local ones, but there's, there's more things that a VR developer can do, right? Like, there's just, that's just all there is to it. Like, you can't have grenades in a real life uh, uh, version of Escape the Room. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I'm shutting it down now. Thank you so much, and I'll actually, I'll be answering some questions afterwards. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. If you didn't, hit the downvote button and tell me what I can do to make these videos better. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.